everyone, this is Amy Astro here and I'm back this week with another video and this week I'm going to show you where I screwed up and a quick and easy way to fix it. So stay tuned, it's not the end of the world, not yet. made a mistake. I made a big mistake. Uh, hey everyone, I'm here to admit to you that I made a big mistake. Have you ever had that moment where you've done something and you wish you could back up just half a blink and uh, undo what you just did? Last week, in a rush, uh, we had a clear night and didn't have very long, but I really wanted to get the Freedom Scope out there, catching some photons, and uh, you know, getting everything calibrated and up and running for everyone. And in the process, I set up the tripod and I went to put the mount on the tripod and I noticed that the north peg was actually loose. So I grabbed it and I hand tightened it and the flat sides weren't lined up where I felt they needed to be. It was just a little bit off kilter, so I went into somebody's toolbox that I should probably know better than to touch. You know, that one back there. And I grabbed a set of vice grips because I couldn't find pliers or crescent wrenches that fit what I needed to use. And I grabbed hold of that north peg and I, with the vice grips and I tightened it. Apparently I don't know my own strength and uh, didn't know I was quite that strong. In that instant, God, I wish I could back up just that half of a blink, I snapped the north peg clean off the tripod. What happened? The north peg ended up right here in my hand, broken off from the threads, and the threads are right here. And you know, they should be together. This was one of those moments when you just say, oh, yeah, I can't believe I just did that. So now I have a north peg here and I have the threaded portions here. So that's a bit problematic, don't you think? So now I've got this in my hand and where's the thread part here? And this piece is stuck inside the tripod, even worse. I don't have a clue how to remove this, but you know, thankfully I've got a, a, a handy husband who does this for a living and he knew exactly what needed to be done and was kind enough to get his speed out drill bits and remove this piece for me. So in the meantime, I'm hunting Google everywhere for one of these North Pegs. And I actually had to uh, do quite a bit of research just to find a name that I could search. You know, was it a North Peg? But I needed to find one. So I searched all the known manufacturers and not very many of them offer spare replacement parts. And that's, that's difficult, especially when you're like me and you break things. I don't mean to break things, but they break. And Ultimately, what I had to do is I called a couple different vendors, you know, the ones that the, the big supply houses. We've got, you know, like a High Point Scientific, we've got Cloudbreak Optics, and I called them both up and said, listen guys, I need one of these. Do you have another option for me? I can't find the replacement part. And the replacement is off of the Skywatcher's website, but they don't have a really great um, way for me just to click and buy. So ultimately I have to contact them directly and when you send an email and panic on the weekends and you know you're one of thousands of emails that come in, it takes them a while to get through to you and I'm not the most patient person so I called the vendors up and the vendors in turn got hold of Skywatcher and they're really nice and they said yeah we've got something but it's on back order two, three weeks, 
it's, uh, you know, and that with me is not good enough. I really wanted it. I really wanted to get outside. So I started asking around and talking to all the guys that I know that are, are you know, maintenance related. They're, they're kind of really handy guys to, to know. And they came up with a suggestion for me. And I'm going to show you what I've got here. What I did is I went on Amazon, my favorite store, and I bought a bunch of these socket style heads and they're threaded. Now I know that these threads are M6 threads. So I got all of these drilled out as M6 and I just ordered them directly off of Amazon. But I wasn't exactly sure of what size I needed. So I took the original North Pay, dropped the calipers on them, and the peg itself, the block, is about 19.3 millimeters. Now, when I add it all up together with the thread heads here, let's see if I can grab this. I have approximately 33 to 34 millimeters to work with. Okay, so then I needed to find a screw that I could drop all the way through this and then I would just tighten it down. And I have several different sizes because I didn't know which size I got needed, so I spent a fortune buying these things. But I ended up with the short one working the best for me at 20 millimeters. All right, so then I needed to be on the hunt for a screw that I could use. Now I started out with one of these, let's see, I buy these multi-packs all the time. And this is a flathead socket screw. It's M6 threaded. And I took it and I threaded it all the way down on here. And at first, it looked like it was gonna work great for me. And then I realized I probably needed to countersink it into this socket to make it just a little bit flatter. So what I did is I head out to the shed and I broke out the drill press again and I found a countersink, where's the one here? A countersink drill bit, and I countersunk this head down into it. And that looked really, really good at, at first. Let me get this all the way down for you, and I'll show you why it didn't quite work for me. Now, it's, counter, it's down in there, it's countersunk, but I don't know if you can tell, but the head of this has a larger diameter than the socket head. And that head is about, let's get this down here, uh, 11 and 3 quarter millimeters. And that head was just enough that when I put it down as my north peg, that it, it hit up here. Let's see. Get this going up here for you. It hit, you know, it, it went up into here, but it hit up against this casing. So when I rotated it, it would kind of do a little bump up and not sit properly. It was just too wide for me. So I had to do something about that. And again, I, I grabbed my handyman here and he took a lathe, which was great, but you know, not everybody has a lathe around and he cut off part of this head. So now it went up in here perfectly and it worked. This is one that completely works and it's great. Um, I don't need the extra nut down at the bottom to raise or lower it because it is the perfect height for what I need. And that was 25.3 millimeters. So that's one that works, but it took a huge amount of effort to get it to work. I had to countersink it and then I had to drop it on a lathe and get it off, you know, to drill that edge off. And then I had to file it, smooth it, so I wouldn't scratch myself. But you know, there's got to be something easier out there. This one looks great, but I have another solution for you. One that's going to work even easier, you buy two parts or you have to buy bulk, kind of like what I have to, and it works. So what I found out is I went and I got some more screws. And this one is called a button head socket screw. You see it's kind of rounded on the outside 
and the head itself is of a smaller diameter. The head is right at 10 millimeters versus, where's the socket? This one was at about 11 and a half to 12 millimeters. Just that millimeter made a whole lot of difference. But because it was rounded shaped, it worked really well when it, it inserted down into here. So what I had to do is I just grabbed straight up out of the box, no modifications, even better. And then this guy straight up out of the box, no modification, and I threaded them together. But this guy is just a touch short from what I needed. So then I had to go get an M6 nut. So let's find one here in my little multi kit here. And uh, let's see, we've got M8, M6, nice M8 mud. So this will allow me to adjust everything up or down in the North Peg hole. And this works great. And I'll show you how it works in just a moment. All right, so I've got my tripod here and the old drill, the screw threads have been removed. And now it is time for us to see how everything all works together. So I've got my North Peg that I made and I'm gonna thread it down in here. And I know that this amount actually ended up being the perfect height for me. So let's go ahead and tighten this down. I don't want this, I get my, uh, there we go. Try not to be too strong with this. I don't need to snap another one because I would definitely be pushing my luck to get someone to uh, remove another set of threads for me. So now that this is on here, let's go ahead and grab the mount, okay? And that's, that's a heavy guy. There we go. Go ahead and straighten him up for us. All right, he's on there. He's sitting flush. That looks good. Let's tuck this in here so it doesn't fall off on us. All right, he's on there good and secure. And let's put these, let's put these pegs back in. But first, let's, uh, let's let me grab my flashlight just to make sure that, yep, I'm going to hit the square side of that socket and I'm not hitting the button top at all. So that's good. And let's put these in. All right. So the good news is even though I really screwed up and I broke something that was very critical to working this mount and stuff, there was an easy solution for it. I just had to think a little bit out of the box and I had to enlist the help of some friends to get some ideas. I mean, you know, I told them what I wanted to accomplish and we bounced a whole bunch of things back and forth until we came up with some. So let's look, let's got this tightened down. So you can see he's rotating as he should. Let's test this side out. And there he goes goes perfect so a few dollars worth of parts and I'm off and running and I can go catch some photons the next clear sky and uh, hopefully that won't be too much longer from now and we're gonna get back on here and get everything wired up with our scope and we need to configure all our software still so we've got a little bit further left of this project but I appreciate you guys hanging with me for this long as we get this done you know, this is one of those things where you can just be a weekend warrior at this hobby and it takes a little bit of time. But uh, if you guys like this video, don't forget to like down below, subscribe to this channel. I love all of y'all and leave me comments. I love comments. I read them all. I respond to them all. Uh, constructive criticism is always welcome, whether you guys don't like my lighting, my sound or the topics. Tell me what you want to hear about and I will see if I can accommodate it. And if I can't accommodate it, I know somebody who can accommodate it and I'll send you to another YouTube channel. That's not a big deal. We're all one big happy family out here on YouTube and that's a good thing. But thank you for your time 
And until next time, you all have some very clear skies. Bye, y'all.